welcome back. Welcome to this episode of Altitude. And with me today, we have Sasha. Sasha from the Afrobot Coalition, formerly the Afrobot Boys and Girl. How are you doing today, Sasha? I'm doing very well. So why, well, thank you for taking time away from your busy schedule. I know that you have, you've been in a coding class. We'll talk a little bit about the coding class. We're gonna talk a little bit about your experience with the robotics team that you were on. And we're gonna maybe talk a little bit about how you got interested in uh, diving into the whole robotics thing. So, so why don't you, we start there. Does that sound good? Sure. So how did you get interested in robotics? Well, it first started when I went to Orlando, Florida for a dance competition. There was this day off, so we decided to go on rides. Hmm. There was this one ride, it was the Under the Sea ride with, from The Little Mermaid. Okay. There was this one t time in the ride, there was like little puppets acting. I'm like, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. And so my mom told me it's coding. And so that's how I got interested to coding. So you were in Orlando, and was it at Disney or mm -hmm. Little Mermaid at Disney? Disney, yes. And then, so you saw the puppets that were moving, and then that's how you got interested in how the arms move and yes. okay, and all the whole robotics thing just took off from there, and that's how you guys became to be the the world renowned mm -hmm. Afrobot boys and girl for that one season. So. So you got into robotics that way. What? How did you find out about uh, more about coding? I mean, are you? Do you go to any coding classes or? Well, I just started a coding class last week. It's um, at BDPA. Mm -hmm. We learned how to use uh, HTML mm -hmm. to like make a story or something like that, okay. and how to. Uh, make an unordered list and how to um, do a number by number with pixels with a picture. So so you're doing graphic sizing when you can, so is that when you put the, the picture on a web page and you can change the sizes of it? Is that the pixels? Yeah. Because you know, not, every, not everybody is smart as you, so you know, we got to make sure we, we let our audience know about all that stuff. So that's pretty amazing. So you're learning HTML, you're learning about graphics, and you're learning about uh, all the visual aspects of it as well as programming, right? Because you said you had a list. What kind of lists are there? You said unordered lists. Um, so it's basically like a list that you make, but with coding. Mm -hmm. So the unordered list, it will look like as if it had bullet points. Now, there's an order list. That ordered list would have like numbers by the side of it. Very cool. Yeah. And then there's a, you could uh, program a list inside of a list. Yeah. Now, that uses uh, like uh, ABCs and all kinds of, yeah. I mean, you can do, uh, letters. once you learn how to do that, so you still have a few more weeks that you'll be attending that, right? So that's yes. going to go for a while. That's very good. And I neglected to say, what grade are you in? Fifth. You're in fifth grade, but? But I was supposed to be in fourth. Right. I actually went to fourth for the first term and a little bit of term two. That's when I moved to fifth grade, mm -hmm. which is the other side of the building wow. of the um, of the of the facility of this, the school. Yes. So you were on the, the younger side. So here yes. you are a fourth grader. Actually, you're, you should be in fourth grade, but you're actually really in fifth grade because you got jumped ahead. Yes. And you're doing all this coding, right? Doing yes. the coding and you um, worked on a robotics team right through the Minnesota STEM Partnership. Nice yes. shirt, by the way. And uh, you guys did a fantastic job there and had a good time. We'll talk a little bit about the experience you had, but I'm really fascinated by all the technology that you learned as part of that. So 
tell me a little bit about um, about the competition. So you have the actual part of the competition that the robot, you program the robot, and then you have a presentation, right? Yes. So let's talk first a little bit about the presentation. What was the competition about? And tell me a little bit about your... Well, the competition was about um, like uh, outer space. Mm -hmm. So the project that I did was basically like problems that can occur in space. Mm -hmm. um, the problem that I was thinking of was oxygen, because like that's basically <laughs> the most important thing that you need. Mm -hmm. And so, you know the oxygen tanks that are on the astronauts' backs while they're like completing tasks. Mm -hmm. While they're floating around, yes, out yes. tethered, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that ran out, uh, there would be nothing to do if there was no they backup. Would be trouble. Yes. They would be. So, yeah. Keep. So, what would they do? What was your presentation about? It was about like how we can have the backup oxygen tank on the arm. Mm -hmm. with oxygen oh. so that yeah. they can actually return to the uh, space shuttle without having problems. Well, that's a brilliant idea. So your, your thought was they just strap something on their forearm on the or something, arm. Yeah. then they have enough to get back. That's good. A re, uh, some uh, kind of reserve supply type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, that's very... That's very good. I hope NASA sees this video. We need to send you down over to, out to outer space to help out those astronauts. So in addition to having the presentation, you guys did pretty good at your presentation, I hear, too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you did. So let's talk just real briefly a little bit about the robot and programming the robot. Um, what was the competition like, and then what part of the robot did you like best? Uh, the competition... It was, it was a very, it could be fun, but it could be like frustrating because the robot can like glitch during, um, uh, it's mission do, type of yes. thing when it's moving? Yes. Okay. And that's how, uh, it could be frustrating. Mm -hmm. But the thing but that- But you didn't get frustrated, did you? No. Okay. Um, so that's how, like, but when it's fun, it doesn't really have to be frustrating, because, like, you'll probably be able to figure out a way to uh, make it stop glitching, because mm -hmm. um, every time we finish our mission or, like, Uh, when it returns, when you get done with it? Yes, and, when, it and when we go back to the room, we can actually um, add things to the program so that it won't glitch wow. during the mission. Very cool, very cool. So did you, was it a new experience? How many times have you been to a competition like that? Uh, I've only been to a competition once. That was my first competition okay. with uh, programming. Fantastic. And you guys did a fantastic job, too. So hopefully you had a good time. Hopefully you'll come back or you'll do other types of competitions, I'm sure, that are ahead of you. Now, tell me a little bit about, um, have you thought about what school or even what type of job or you're free to just say whatever career you think you might want to go into? You have, have you ever thought about what kind of job you want to get? No. Well, you got plenty of time. Let me tell you, you keep... You keep doing what you're doing and stay focused in on your grades and your school because obviously you're brilliant. You're able to jump ahead a grade and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm sure you have a very, very bright future ahead of you. So, Ms. Sha Sasha, thank you very much for coming today on this episode of Altitude.
Welcome back. Well, with me right now is Miss J. Miss J, how are you doing today? I am well, thank you. And yourself? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about what a high school student needs to think about as they go into college or maybe anticipate certain scenarios, certain professional in uh, networking, yes. you know, how they handle themselves, potentially um, talk about college students that say, I wish I would have focused in on that. Yes. So we're going to talk yes. about etiquette sure. as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Now, tell me a little bit about what you do. I know you have, I called you Miss J purposely. So do you want to share a little bit about what you do professionally? I will. But first, let me tell you about Miss J. Okay. I'm a Southern girl. Okay. I'm from Louisiana. And if you're anything over 18, you are a Miss something. So my name is Juliet, Juliet Mitchell. Juliet has three syllables. Teenagers don't like saying all those syllables, so they kind of narrowed it down to Miss J. But they had to call me Miss something. So that's how I got the Miss J persona. Very well. Yes. So what do you do? Um, what do you do for a living? As all they right. Say? Well, currently, for the past oh, just about 20 years, I've been doing professional development, focusing on business and social etiquette. I didn't start with that. I call it work readiness. And I still do work readiness, but I do it from a context of how to get your being, your, your social self ready for the work environment. Fantastic. Yes. So that's very important work because our young people need to focus in on being prepared for the future, right? That's true. Because the future is yes. here. Yes. Future isn't yes. coming. They are in the midst of this. So tell me a little bit about um, the project that you're working on, a uh, conversation that you're going to have with college students potentially, and maybe some le lessons learned from high school students as they go into college. Oh, awesome. So I've been working with a number of colleges for the past few years, and that's where it seems to be my sweet spot, so to speak, mm -hmm. getting people ready for the workforce. And what I'm finding that a lot of college students are saying they didn't get certain skills, especially social skills while they were in high school. And now they're in college getting ready to move into life on their own. Mm -hmm. And they're looking back and saying, man, I wish I had this in high school. Sure. I wish I had done that. And I give sure. you an example. I used to teach college success classes. Mm -hmm. And in the classes, one of the biggest things was to learn about you. So you will, will know how to articulate who you are to a college uh, professor, to an internship. Mm -hmm. So we'd explore you as a person, your strengths, your challenges. I choose not to say weaknesses. I call mm -hmm. them challenges, mm -hmm. things that you are not really good at or has posed a challenge in your life. So if you can address those things, they don't get in the way of your skills. Oh, absolutely. And I know mm -hmm. being involved with um, various technology organizations yes. over the past, like you said, for me, decades mm -hmm. is some of our students are very good with technology. Yes. You know, they're very focused mm -hmm. and they aren't really social creatures. They mm -hmm. are, but they're in their own social entity. Right? Yes. Cir mm -hmm. Circles, gamers and programmers. Mm -hmm. and some of them have a tendency to kind of break off and have their own set of skills. So what you do sounds to be very important and very important skills that will help these kids maybe come out of their shell mm -hmm. or understand that there's a bigger um, opportunities for them and how to break through some of those communication, mm -hmm. you know, not weaknesses, opportunities, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so what's what's on the horizon for you in terms of um, any particular workshops or anything that you're working on? Well, there's one particular one I'm working on, and it's becoming more in demand. Is the networking and social interaction with college students? Mm -hmm. They have again focused on their technical skills and what they know how to do. But then when it comes to presenting themselves, they fall short. Some of them even avoid contact mm -hmm. with people because they have to look in someone's eyes and they mm -hmm. have to speak. So when I'm doing a workshop or a full set of uh, training, I said, you're going to talk every time we're together. You're going to say your name, first name, and last name at least once sure. every time. You're going to shake someone's hand. You're going to ask a question. You're going to answer a question because that's what the world's going to be like. Mm -hmm. You can understand robotics and you can understand the technical aspect, but if you can't explain that or engage people, mm -hmm. you just got this fantastic product that you're not able to really speak on. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have you run into situations where um, a student has given you a very vivid example of what they wish that they had they been in a scenario? Like, for instance, a job interview and they made a mistake? 
Oh yes. And how, you handle, <laughs> and how should they have handled that? There are a lot. There are a lot of those, especially in this era of technology and mm -hmm. cell phones. Some of the things that young people have done with cell phones has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So. I hope you don't mind my saying this. So you, you have your cell phone on the table right now, mm -hmm. but guess what? You're the boss. Mm -hmm. You get to have your cell phone on the table. Mm -hmm. You can kick your feet up on the table. You own the company. You're the boss already. Uh -huh. I can't come in and do that. I can't come in and plop my cell phone on the table and slip back and put my feet on the desk. Wow. You would look at me like, uh, did she really do that? Some people do because they say, well, they should be comfortable. So I got comfortable. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's a literal be comfortable, then there's you have to present yourself in a certain way comfortable. Uh, present yourself in a certain way. And that's how I talk about etiquette. So people think about etiquette as being really frou-frou and Perfect. about eating and knife and <laughs> I fork. Saw the hand. Yes, and it does include all of that, but it, etiquette is so much more. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. etiquette is about the respect you so, show for yourself, mm -hmm. for other people in the world around you. Mm -hmm. So I need to learn something about you and your about your environment. So when people say research the company, and now with all this technology, you can research the individual. Sure. So if I know I'm coming in to see you, mm -hmm. what do I know about you? What do I know about your company so that when I come in, I respect you mm -hmm. by treating you well and honoring who you are as a person? Sure. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. And this is also off the cuff, but as students, there's more competition, right, for, mm -hmm. for particular Definitely. colleges you get into, mm -hmm. as well as the job market. Yes. But if we back it off to that sliver of space called college, yes. and the things that they need to prepare for, mm -hmm. um, do you see more colleges allowing students to come in in any old way with hand, you know, their English Writing. Unfortunately, do you have any some of them do. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, I was given the opportunity to deliver the commencement address mm -hmm. for National American University. And I wanted to know, why did you choose me? They rarely choose faculty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a well-known person, national figure. Mm -hmm. And they said it was the way that I connected with the students and the way that I ran my classroom. Mm -hmm. That was a career college, and I took it literal. I am getting you ready for a career. So you couldn't come in my room just any way. If you had career management, you didn't have to wear a suit and tie, but you had to come in presentable. If you had to make a phone call, I realize people have life mm -hmm. outside of the classroom, but you respect me in the class enough to make your call outside, come in ready to work. You, that kind of thing. Sure. Or someone would come talking on the phone or they use swear words. Mm -hmm. Okay, swear words, that's, that's one of my that's biggest pet peeves. Yes, it's a, that's red, a red, flag. red flag. So I said, you mean to tell me your professors allow you to use a profanity in the classroom? They were like, yeah, yeah. Well, they do. I said, well, can we have an agreement that not in this classroom because I don't want you going telling anyone that you were in my class Using and I allow profanity because it's not going to serve you well. Well, let me circle back to one key thing mm -hmm. that you said was uh, what I don't think that many students understand is that as they follow their journey, as they graduate, is they're in high school, mm -hmm. yes. 10th and 11th mm -hmm. and then 12th grade for sure, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a big year, 12th yes. grade. Mm -hmm. And then as they go into college, let's say that they either, they go to a two-year university mm -hmm. or to a four-year university. Yes. Along the way, they've seen many, many different teachers, mm -hmm. but at the end of the road, they have to look back and get uh, referrals. They do, and yes. So, so it's important that the students know to present themselves well, even though they say be comfortable, yes. you can't really be that comfortable because those people might depend on your future, getting in or That's out of true. that big job. That's true. Now, my motto for my business is manners are memorable because mm -hmm. people remember what you do, what you say, and how you behave. That's why I, have, I say always put your best foot forward. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. You're still a teenager and you're gonna do things that teenagers do, but you gotta be respectful to your instructors. Absolutely. Build those relationships because if you haven't worked, your instructor is gonna be your reference. Absolutely. Another thing was to join organizations. Some people are very bright and they have this high GPA, but there was no involvement on campus in high school or college. Mm -hmm. So by joining a team or club, whether it's a sports team or a chess club or robotics, whatever that is, mm -hmm. it's showing that you know how to work with people, 
that you uh, can be a team player, mm -hmm. that you are committed. So all of those things. So you start building your references by being involved in organizations and you're building your friendships because I may have to call you. I may be on another campus, but maybe I'll call uh -huh. you and we can work together on a project. I like that yes. collaboration. Yes, definitely. exactly. Yeah. Well, Ms. J, before we break, uh, are there any things that you want to say to our young folks out in the audience? Any particular... Uh, yes, I always have something to say to young people. And, and part of my speech was that they hear all the time, children are the future. But now that I am getting more mature, mm -hmm. they really are. So it's up to us to get them ready. Mm -hmm. You're getting them ready technically with the, uh, the STEM work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm helping them get ready socially, socially and emotionally so that they are ready. They are full whole person. Mm -hmm. They're smart, mm -hmm. uh, they're caring individuals, and they know how to conduct themselves. And that's going to make them more marketable. And they got to be loving human beings because they're going to be caring for us in a few years. Good point. Thank you, Ms. Michael. J, thank you for coming. You're quite welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us this episode of Altitude. We also had a chance to hear from Sasha. Sasha, the future roboticist that's doing coding. And young people, definitely stick with coding, stick with robotics or any activity in STEM that you can get into. Just do it, it pays off in the end. And we had the great opportunity to hear from Ms. J so that as you progress into high school, you can start thinking about those things in your presence. Uh, we've talked a lot about social media presence, but your own personal presence and making sure that you make a positive impact on those people that you run into along your future great career. So thank you for joining this episode of Altitude and we'll see you next time. Michael Wolf out. <laughs>